What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who made their debut earlier than WWE told you. Now, there's been times where wrestlers will have debuted as another gimmick or maybe even enhancement talent and you didn't really know or paid attention. And then they repackaged them into something else and then they, you know, either it works out for them or it doesn't. Or even in some situations, you get repackaged again. So we're gonna check out some of these moments where, you know, wrestlers had debuted and you didn't know who they were until they repackaged them again and then they became a little bit more uh noticeable and uh, more famous when it comes to their in-ring character and development so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support should be a good one let's get right into this thing a superstar's debut is one of the most important moments of their career it lets the wwe fans know what to expect out of a certain character and they'll remember their debut for years to come when WWE presents a brand new superstar on television and claims it's their in-ring debut, this actually always isn't the case. Mm -hmm. It's common practice for wrestlers to debut in an unofficial capacity on smaller shows or even in different roles, and WWE prefers to not acknowledge this time Wait period a in the company. That was Ty Dillinger? The guy that got super kicked by Shawn Michaels when he was on a super kick uh, a rampage in the back? That was Ty Dillinger? I did, whoa, 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 whoa. That was a legend, funny as segment. Official capacity on smaller shows or even in different roles. Bro. WWE prefers to not acknowledge this time what? period in the company. But which times were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 that, WWE superstars who actually debuted before their official debut. Wow, I never knew that. I just remembered just the segment being so hilarious because sure everyone that, that walked down that hallway was just getting videos super and Follow us on Facebook for exclusive <laughs> list. Number 10, Robert Roode. Robert Roode has made his official WWE debut back in 2016 and since his debut, Roode has made moderate success in WWE having won the NXT, US and tag titles. However, what fans often forgot about is that Rude actually appeared in WWE 15 years prior. Wow. Between the years of 2001 and 2004, Rude appeared on a number of shows such as Jacked, Metal and Heat and his main role was that of an enhancement talent. Oh. Rude also featured as a police officer during the segment to the build towards The Undertaker and Triple H at WrestleMania 17 over a decade before That's Rude would have crazy. a close working relationship with Triple H himself. Number 9, Samoa Joe. And long before Samoa Joe was choking out people in TNA, he actually appeared in WWE. What? That was when it was the WWF. Yeah, that's right. Joe appeared on WWE television over 20 years ago. That's insane. Joe would wrestle in February of 2001 in a match against S.A. Rios on Jacked, and Joe actually put him over. Joe would notably sport a completely different look for the match, and from winning look the match, the younger it was Joe. Clear that Joe wasn't ready to be a big star yet. He eventually debuted in WWE 14 years later, wow. but it's always fun to look back at his unofficial WWE nope. debut just to see how much- A lot of these I'm going to be totally surprised by. <laughs> NXT champion has changed. Number 8, MVP. One certain segment on SmackDown in 2005 featured the unofficial debuts of two future WWE wow. stars. The segment was a Kurt Angle Invitational, and his opponent for this would be none other than future Undisputed this Era member crazy. Roderick Strong. This was Strong's first ever appearance on television, and he actually wouldn't appear again on television till over a decade later. The other superstar was MVP, who was playing the role of a police officer in the segment. Yes. The police officers were Would there to protect Angle's it. gold medals as they Would were a valuable commodity it. that needed protection. MVP would debut just over a year later on television as a completely different character, but this was the future US champion's first time in the WWE spotlight. This is, this is a cool Number video. Number 7, Dean Ambrose. A WWE site Dean Ambrose's official debut is taking place at the 2012 Survivor Series alongside Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins as The Shield. However, this isn't actually the case. Between the years of 2006 and 2007, Ambrose made what? a number of appearances on television as an enhancement talent. Wow. The first of these came in early 2006 when Ambrose teamed with Brad Taylor to take on Eminem in a match. Ambrose with long hair is throwing me off. <laughs> on Velocity. What? His other two matches included a handicap match against The Big Show, which he naturally lost, and a match Bro, against Val Venus. Like crazy. For the match what with the Venus, Ambrose dyed his hair pink, which certainly made him stand out amongst the crowd, but not necessarily for the right reasons. 
Ambrose also made an appearance as a Druid during the Undertaker's cameo at the end of the 2006 Royal Rumble, seven years before the two would be facing off on what? SmackDown. Number six, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan is this widely is regarded so cool. as being one of the most popular stars of the modern era in WWE. His in-ring style and character truly resonated with fans, and this all started when he debuted in NXT back in 2010. Now, although WWE likes to claim that Bryan officially debuted in 2010, this isn't actually true, as Bryan has his first match on WWE TV a decade prior. Mm. In 2000, Bryan was signed to a WWE development deal, and they saw him wrestle a number of dark matches, as well as wrestle on shows such as Velocity. Bryan's wow. first ever official match in WWE was a dark tank team match in early 2000, and this saw Bryan team with Shooter Schultz to take on the duo Bryan Kendrick and Lance Cade. Wow. Bryan would detail this time in his autobiography, and according to him, there were plans to call him up to the main roster in 2001 to be part of the cruiserweight division, mm. but this never materialized. Number 5, Johnny Gargano. And what's crazy about this is maybe it's a good thing it didn't happen, because there's a good chance we probably wouldn't have gotten a yes movement. It's crazy how things happen for a reason. Just when you think it's, you know, it's bad luck or you didn't get the, the position you wanted, then something else opens up for you. And now you have a, a greater position that you didn't even think was possible, you know? So that's, that's so, bro, this video, I'm loving videos like this that, surprise me you think you know so much about the wrestling world and what's happened in the past and then you get get info info dumps like this where you're like oh man this is pretty cool i never knew this and this is coming from someone that's been a fan of wrestling for a very long time a lot of this i did not know so this whole list is damn near shocking to me oh. Now, before Johnny Gargano was receiving five-star ratings this from Dave cool. Meltzer, he was trying to break into the WWE by having tryout matches, as wow. well as making random and bizarre appearances on WWE television. <laughs> on the March 23rd, 2007 edition of SmackDown, Gargano appeared as the champion of Liechtenstein, Cedric Von Hausen, wow. and a match in a losing effort against MVP. He also appeared as a security guard in <laughs> NXT in 2010, and he would also wrestle a year later on Superstars as Joey Joe Gray, Gray in a match against Brodus Clay. It's never been explained why WWE decided not to sign the talented Gargano to a contract. In 2010, WWE still had reservations regarding smaller independent wrestlers being signed, but that was until the likes of CM Punk and Daniel Bryan became major players in the company. Number four, Tommaso Ciampa. Oh. The former NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa, perhaps one of the most infamous unofficial Bro, debuts in WWE. He first appeared on screen in the summer of 2005, portraying a character known as Thomas Whitney. Whitney would act as one of Muhammad Hassan's lawyers, and at the time of the segment taking place, Hassan was in the midst of a feud with The Undertaker. Uh, yeah. The segment concluded with Ciampa being tombstoned by The Undertaker in a truly memorable first appearance for the WWE star. During a 2019 interview with CBS Sports State of Combat podcast, Ciampa would discuss in detail his first ever WWE appearance. He stated, So I rehearsed that script in front of everybody, but it's solo in front of Vince in his office. I did in ring with Undertaker, Vince and Hunter was there. Looking back now, I see how big of a deal it was and just how crazy it was to have that one-on-one -on -one time with everybody as a kid on the independence. It was wild. Everybody treated me incredibly well. I remember they didn't like the suit that I had on, so they went and bought me a suit and let me keep it. <laughs> this appearance wow. alongside The Undertaker actually wasn't Ciampa's only time appearing in WWE before his official debut in 2015. He was so different without He'd also wrestle in late 2005 against Jamie Noble on Velocity, and in the summer of 2006, he would team with future WWE champion Kofi Kingston to take on Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch <laughs> in a dark crazy. match. Number three, AJ Styles. And when AJ Styles finally signed a WWE contract in 2016, it was seen as a long time coming as AJ was initially offered a contract back in 2002. Mm. Before he joined TNA, he made a number of appearances for WWE. And the first of these was in July of 2001, where he had a tryout match before Raw against his trainer, Rick Michaels. The second match of AJ's WWE career came in 2002, when he wrestled a hurricane on metal. And this would then be followed up with another dark match against Rico. The matches against the Hurricane and Rico were Damn. impressive enough for AJ to be offered a WWE developmental deal. But AJ smartly turned down the deal as he would have to relocate and he wasn't willing to make that big of a sacrifice at a pivotal time in his career. Number two. And you know what? I think it worked out for him in the best. Him going to TNA, building up his name there, 
was the best move for him. You know, doing doing his thing in Independence and and being being on that TNA was the best move for him. Once again, like I said earlier in this video, it's crazy how certain things happen, and it actually works out for you. In hindsight, you may not think about it, but it like when it's when it's, when you're actually in the process of something happening, like, like maybe you're not getting the the contract from WWE, and then you end up going somewhere else, making a name for yourself, and then they ask you to come back, and they paying you the big bucks. It's pretty cool. This is pretty damn cool. Kurt Angle. My WWE is a habit of rewriting their own established history, and this is what happened with the 1999 debut of Kurt Angle. For the past two decades, WWE have been telling fans that Angle burst onto the scene at the 1999 Survivor Series pay-per-view, but this simply isn't true. Angle actually made his first appearance on WWE television in March of 1999 on an episode of Heat. Angle was involved in a segment with the villainous Tiger Ali Singh who was trying to pay money for Angle to blow his nose on the American flag. Instead, Angle blew his nose on Ali's flag and proceeded to brawl with the forgotten star. He would also Damn. wrestle on a number of house shows as well as appearing at live events throughout the summer of 1999. And they consequently decided to tweet the presentation of Angle and when he officially debuted in November of 1999, they decided to present the Olympic gold medalist as a heel moving forward. And, and... <laughs> Obviously, they did that to kind of gauge the audience reaction. They'll usually debut somebody on a house show because back then, people didn't like, you know, the house shows weren't, they're not televised. People weren't, you know, they would take pictures, but this is like before the internet was like really popular like that. So people weren't really saying too much about house shows. You had to be there to kind of be there to see some of the stuff. So that he would do, they would do that in a sense to kind of, get the feel of how the crowd would feel with this talent or have them do dark matches or whatnot. And then after that, they'll either tweak it or be like, nah, we're not going to go with you. Or maybe they'll give a contract. And that's kind of what they did here. And number one, The Undertaker. This the I, Undertaker's I debut at the 1990 before. Survivor Series is the perfect wrestling debut. It presents The Undertaker's mortician character in the right manner, and it indicated to the audience that it needed to take this brand new character and gimmick very seriously. But although the official debut of The Dead Man was truly fantastic, it, it actually wasn't the first time that Taker wrestled on television. He actually debuted a few days prior on an episode of WWE Superstars in a victory over Mario Mancini. Oh. Interestingly, The Undertaker also had a slightly different name as he would be known as Kane The Undertaker. Whoa, I didn't WWE know that. He decided to remove the Kane aspect of his name and this would obviously be used seven years later when The Undertaker's demonic half-brother entered the WWE. I did not know that. But there you have it, folks. Too. I'm thinking of him being what he was before he be that came with the Undertaker gimmick and, you know, how, you know, people were like, he he'll never succeed or whatnot. That's what I was thinking of. But that's... Bro, this is this video, man. This is a straight, straight thumbs up, man. Straight thumbs up for me. I, I enjoyed this video. It, I like videos like this where they're able to surprise me on uh, facts that I didn't even know about. A lot, all of this, this entire list, did not even know that uh, they were, you know, at one point in the company and just seeing how they looked then compared to now is 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 pretty pretty incredible incredible so comment down below let me know which one of these individuals on this list did you not know was in wwe at one point let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel road to 150k and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace